Hello, hello. And we're going to start with a new lesson, trying to explain a little bit how the clumps can be broken and how the clumps behave inside of a different clump. So the clumps as a subclump system. So if we go back and we said that the clumps, they live inside of a clump system and they look something like this. Yeah, those are the ones. So we have the influence of the force. How do they look with force? And also we have different ways to break them. We cannot just break the big clumps with uh, the envelope or the mask or the blend, but we can also break them with their inner structure. So there's basically two general types of breakup. If we have a tight clump, we can break it on three different ways, basically. The first one will be the blend. So the blend is a basic shape that just opens the clump and removes the influence. If we have a noise, it has the same effect. So it completely removes the influence of the guides and completely remove the influence of all the clump and everything that is inside of the clump, noises and all. Then we have the second one, that is the tightness. I always struggle with this word, I may have put it wrong. The tightness, it's similar to the actual shape of the clumps, but the tightness will control also how tight the clump is. If I completely remove the effect, it will look exactly the same as the clumps. But the difference is that if I have a guide like this, the tightness will make it follow if the blend is present. So the tightness works just on the profile of the clump and not the influence of the clump itself. Then we have the content. The, way, the other way that we can break it is with everything that is inside of the clump. So it's a behavior. It will be the content behavior. Content behavior. And why it's the content and not the clump? Because this concept applies for both. For the big clumps, that they can be broken by the behavior of the small clumps that live inside, and for the small clump, then can be broken by the behavior of the hair that lives inside. So it depends of the structure, but the behavior of the structure can break the shape of the clumps. And there are different ways it can be broken. Pretty much anything that you do inside of the clumps break the shapes of the clumps. It's almost 100% of the things. For example, let's take this clump here. Oops. So this little guy that we added here, let's go closer. We say that we have that main shape, right? So what happens? is for this main shape that we have here, I decide to reduce and to add some noise to the small clumps. So let's say that I add a mid frequency noise that looks like this. So mid frequency high scale. Now you can see that these are still the big clump. One of them is moving just so slightly from here. Let's put a color that is more visible. The other one is moving more and the other one is moving way more. So this means that what we decided that it was a clump, now it is not. We still have the influence of the root and if we decide that the noise just affects the top part of it, then we can have something that is more like this, more inline to what we had before. And then 
we will break just the tip of the clump and not the root of the clump. But that's if we add a mask that the noise just affect after the second half of the clump. But the noise inside, so on the content of or not all four clumps will break the clumps. And this will add texture and also will remove details. Another way to break your clumps will be, uh, let me just select this. By adding noise on the strands. If this is a normal groom and I repeat the same process and I add noise here, even if I had my hair doing this, the moment that I add noise, the hair will do this. If I add a different type of noise, so let's think, let's make this first. So let's say that I add noise just on some of them. I will still break that. And still we have a per CB. But if I start my noise on the roots, and let's say that I affect just a 50% of my hairs, you can see that the effect will still break slightly my clump and the shape that I will have after. If we compare it to the main shape, oh, I did it on the same row. So let's just make this on a different layer so you can see. So we have half of my hair not affected by the noise and half of the hair affected by the noise. So something like that. So the moment that I turn this off and I turn this off, you can see here that the difference between both clumps is not this one, it's not that one, it's this one. That the difference between both clumps, it's quite extreme. Even if we are using the same shape, this is because the noise will be breaking the inside shape. And if you look closely and you think this as a sphere or something similar, or let's say a surface, a sheen, or anything that will have a shape, and you have clumps like these ones. So let's say that my clumps are like this, right? So let's add some big clumps, some nice variations. Let's think that we have noise. That's good, those are my clumps, no issues there. So my hair will be following this, right? So I have my hairs doing that. Now, this is the basic hairs that I have and they're following the clump shape. But what happens if I, on the contrary, add knots? So just some of them will be following the shape and the other ones will be slightly far away. So just some of them follow and the other ones do not. So the moment that I turn that one off, the guide, we can see the difference between the first layer of clumps and the second layer of clumps. So these ones are using exactly the same shape. Is the same silhouette but the difference that we have here between one and the other is that we have one following the clumps and the other with a length and with a scraggle effect which will mean that we broke the clumps we still have the main shape but we broke it and if I keep adding and adding and adding more information you will see that this will add a different texture and also 
will start adding some kind of softness into it. So breaking the clumps will bring softness to the tips. Now, let's explain this with the actual software. And I'm doing it in Houdini for the only reason that I can see the guides, the guide curve that we need. So let me just change this to background to dark. And I think those colors should be fine. So this it's one single big clump and we have some small clumps, right? I think I can just do clump ID and we should be able to see it. Please, please, please. Okay. So let's use this one. Now, what happens if I add a freeze on my small clump? So you can see here, those are my guides for the small clumps. Each of these guides is creating one small clump. If I come here, make them tighter, you can see them. Each of these guides is one clump, right? So everything's fine there, no issues. So let me just put this visible. And if I add to these guides that I have here, it's making some messy things. This one, guides, skin, and clump guides. So if I add some freeze, let's increase this, and let's do the same. So let's just add this freeze to the tip. So you can see it there, it's just on the tip. And let's add a little bit more of length. We can increase a little bit on the mid. And now you can see here that we have an error. What's the error? Uh, this one here. Uh, guides to guides, that's better. So, you can see that the shape that we had on the clump is being broken by the behavior that we add into our freeze. And if I reduce the amount of frequency, something a little bit simpler like this, you can see how this will start breaking slowly the tip of my clump, something like this. So now this has a similar effect that if I get my clump, you can see it there, the main shape of the clump, and reduce my tightness on the tip by how much? So we have a shape like that, like this. So this will be a similar effect, but we're keeping the content of it. So that's what it does when we add this. If we add on the content of the clump, so the second content on the pair here, and we try to add the same effect, so instead of adding it here, if we try to add it or to add this here, so let's hide this, you can see that the effect will be on a per strand level. And now we're breaking both. We keep a little bit the shape of the first CB, but we're breaking it with everything. So let me just remove the visualize mask. And now you can see how my clumps are getting completely destroyed and they're blending between each other. So if I try to bring my first noise back, you can see that it's broken even more. So this is a similar effect, and this is just one single clump, right? We're talking about this effect and how this shape can affect different clumps. So from a shape like this, that was the main shape that we have, we're adding certain noises that is breaking the tip, and then we add a different level of per strand noise that is breaking both 
we're keeping the roots. The roots are stayed. So we have the clumps on the roots. But my noise on the bass is making that my first clump, that was something like this, going through a pass of destruction that is like this, and a final pass of destruction that completely removes the face, the shape of the clump, but keeps the influence. If I didn't have the first clump, remember that this will be like that. So let's see how these effects work without the main clump. So if I remove the main clump, you can see that now this effect is completely different and it's a singular clump. So this is how the effect of my first clump with no blend will look. So we don't have attraction on my own clump. And each of the small clumps are going to be completely destroyed. But they keep the shapes. So what will happen if I remove the shape of my clumps? I have this. So what will happen if I bring in the shape of my first clump? I will have that. So that's how the hierarchy works. You have a shape, you have a clump, and you have a level of masking and distortion that you can do. You can see that this is the effect that we're applying to our hairs. And if I start working with my shapes also, then I can add a lot of variations to how this hair is being pulled. So maybe I don't want my clumps to be super tight or my small clumps to be super tight, so I want them half tightness. And then maybe I do want my main clump to be super tight or super effective, but not as tight again. So we can have more of a broken shape, but just a little bit of a clump. These kind of clumps are what we can see when we blend between clumps, that we can see some shapes. Remember that on the last lesson, I showed you some clumps that were square. This is mostly what those clumps are. They are a combination of the small clumps being super tight at some point, or everything being tight. Then the big clump is not that tight. We reduce the blend. Then we reduce the blend of the big of the small clumps too, and we added noise. So that's basically what this effect is. Now, we will see what the other effect that can break the clumps are a part of the freeze. Because on this one, we just saw how the noise can break our clumps. From the top level, that will be a big clump, to the small clumps, to the actual per strand level. So this is a variation of levels of details that you can see and the variation of levels of structures that you can get to a really defined clump to a really soft clump.